Okay, and this is our third lesson on radicals. This is adding and subtracting radical expressions. And we're just going to go through some review of things you should already know. Okay, so this first guy here, we've got these two sets of brackets added together. Remember that if there's nothing in front of the brackets, it's like there's a 1. So it's like we're multiplying a 1 into both of these, which of course does nothing. So we get 2x minus 5y minus 4 plus 3x plus 2y. That's 2. And now we just collect like terms. So we got 2x and 3x gives us 5x. Negative 5y, 2y gives us minus 3y and minus 4. Done. Okay, so on this one we're going to multiply through a 1. This one we're going to multiply through a negative 1. So this is actually going to do something. So we got negative 3x minus 4x plus y plus 4. And again, collect like terms. We got negative 7x plus 3y and plus 3. Okay, C, same thing. We're going to be multiplying those 1's through. 2 root x plus 4 root y plus 6 plus root x minus 3 root y plus 2. Notice the like terms are exactly the same. In this case, we've got 2 root x's and 1 root x. Gives us 3 root x. 4 root y minus 3 root y plus 1 root y and then just numbers plus 8. Okay, and now we've got numbers instead of x and y in there, but same thing, we're going to multiply those invisible ones through, which will do nothing. So we've got 3 root 3. Oops, that's a negative, so we go minus there. And then I have 3 root 3 minus 2 root 3 is 1 root 3, 5 root 7, and 1 root 7 is 6 root 7s, and then a 1 and a 3 is a 4. Okay, last guy. When I multiply these 1s through, I need to multiply a negative 1 through those. So the first one I multiply a 1 through, it does nothing. So I got negative 2 root 6 and negative 3 root 6 is negative 5 root 6. Plus root 10 minus root 10 is 0. Minus 3 plus 5 is plus 2. Okay, this guy doesn't look like we have any like terms right away. But we have to remember that root 75 is the root of 25 times 3. So it's going to be root 3 plus 5 root 3 equals 6 root 3. Okay, and now part G starts to get a little messy here. So 128, we can break down into 2 times itself, 7 times. Oops. Five, six, seven. Okay, and it's a cubed root. So I need to pull out groups of three. So I got three or two groups of three, so it's going to be four cubed root two. And then sixteen is two times itself four times. So it's going to look like that. And I'm going to pull out one group of three. So it's going to be two cubed root two. And then fifty-four is 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. And again, I got a group of 3 there, so that's going to be minus 3 cubed root 2. And now these are all like terms. I've got plus 4 minus 5, so minus 1 cubed root 2. 
And h is our last example here for this section. So root 20 is the same as 2 root 5. Root 18 is the same as 3 root 2. Root 45 is the same as 3 root 5. And 50 is the same as 5 root 2. If you don't remember how to get from 20 to 2 root 5, you're going to have to go back a few lessons and have a look at that. Okay, so in this case we've got 2 root 5, 3 root 5 is 5 root 5. And 3 root 2 minus 5 root 2 is going to be minus 2 root 2. All done. Alright, in example 2 from the textbook, we're going to combine some stuff from yesterday with today. So the first thing it wants to do is um, have us tell them when x when the roots are defined, what values of x make the roots defined. In this case, they're square roots, so x is going to have to be positive, greater than or equal to 0. Once we do that, easy, they're all like terms. So I got plus 8 minus 4 is 4 root x. Okay, for part b, again, we've got square roots, so the stuff inside is going to be positive. But a is squared in there, so a can be anything. It just has to be a real number. And then b has to be positive if the, if the things inside the roots are going to be positive. Okay, let's quick rewrite this as root 25 times root a squared times root b plus root 4. Oops, that's not a 4. Root 4 times root a squared times root b. All right, well, root 25 is 5. Square root of a squared is the absolute value of a times the square root of b. Square root of 4 is 2 times the absolute value of a square root of b. So over here we've got five of these monsters. Over here we've got two of these monsters. Add them together, we've got seven absolute value of a root b. Okay, this says the restrictions for C are complicated. So because it's a fourth root, the stuff inside has to be positive. There's two possible ways that can happen. If P and Q are both positive, then the stuff inside is going to be positive. There is another possibility, though, in that if P is negative, Oops, don't need the equals there. We've already taken care of 0. If p is negative and q is negative, then a negative times a negative is also a positive. So we have two possibilities for restrictions there. OK, so now let's look at our expression. Um, the fourth root of 81 is going to be 3. And then we're going to have the fourth root of p to the fourth, which we can pull out. And that's going to be times the fourth root of p cubed. Oops, sorry, that's q to the fourth. There's only three p's. q to the fourth, and then there's still another q left there. And that's minus 2. And same thing, we're going to have the fourth root of q to the fourth times the fourth root of p cubed q. And notice the fourth root of q to the fourth is always going to be positive, so it's going to be 3 times the absolute value of q. minus 2 times the absolute value of q. So we got 3 of those minus 2 of those, got 1 left. And start it with an easy example on the back page. They've already done our restrictions for us, so we just need to collect like terms. We've got 2 root x, 5 root x is 7 root x, negative 3 root y plus 2 root y is going to be minus root y. Done. Okay. Notice on this one, our like terms are going to be cubed root of 2x and square root of 2x. Because they're different roots, they're different sets of like terms. So I've got 8 minus 5 is 3 cubed root 2x 
7 plus 1 plus 8 square root 2x. Done. All right, C is big and ugly. Let's just take it one step at a time. So let's help have a look at the first thing here. 5 square root 8x cubed. So that's going to be 5 times be 2. And then I'm going to have the square root of x squared. In this case, is just x because x can only be positive. So we don't need to put the absolute values on there. And then that's going to be times the root of 2x. And that's plus 4y. And we can pull a 5 out of this. And we can pull a y out. Again, y is always positive, so we don't need the absolute values. That's going to be 3y minus 2. And we can pull a 3 and a y squared out of that. Square root of 3y minus 3x times 5 times the square root of 2x. Alrighty, let's clean these up a bit. So that's 10x root 2x plus 20y squared root 3y minus 6y squared root 3y minus 15x root 2x. All right, so notice that we've got 10x root 2x is there, 15x root 2x is there. So those are like terms. So that gives us negative 5x root 2x. And I've got 20y squared root 3y's minus 6y squared root 3y's. Leaves us with 14y squared root 3y. All done.